We've been highlighting the risks to major cities from sea level rise. Now, we've talked about how water can wipe out our history, its effect on population, the impact on our country's military bases, and the dangers of hazardous materials on metropolitan areas. Now let's talk about rising seas and how it will affect your wallet. We're talking property values and how they're at risk. Now, with every inch the sea rises, some of our cities inch towards disaster. This is how West Palm will look all right, right behind me, with a one-foot rise. It could submerge real estate worth $799 to $1.4 billion. Now, let's take a look at New York City. Here's the sea level rise of one, three, five, and eight feet, and how that could impact the city. We're talking about the airports underwater, uh, inundating those airports. Hurricane Sandy, of course, in 2012 was a turning point, and the storm highlighted New York City's vulnerabilities to coastal storms and rising seas. Thousands of buildings were damaged. Individual property values across the five boroughs dipped nearly $20,000 after Sandy. Now, listen to this. The official value of all the assessed property in New York City tops $1 trillion in 2017. And look at what happens when there's an eight-foot sea level rise. There's a lot of real estate and money that is going to be underwater. So... To talk more about this and New York City, New York City, of course, can't wait 70 years to address the issue. The Office of Recovery and Resilience looks at the risks that the city faces when it comes to climate change. And joining me now from the office is Daniel. Daniel Zarelli, he is the Chief Resilience Officer. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. We appreciate it. Um, you were quoted as saying, adapting the city for the risks of climate change is one of the greatest challenges of our time. So why is that and what are the challenges? Good morning, Stephanie. It's great to be on the show again. But let me just talk about what that means. So we face a number of risks in New York City, uh, for sure. Uh, but as you pointed out, Hurricane Sandy really highlighted our risks to the vulnerabilities of climate change. 44 lives lost, $19 billion in damages and lost economic activity. And the way we responded to that, I think, is really important. And some of the innovation that came out of Sandy was to really think broader about the risks we face from climate change. And what we've already seen here in New York City, we've seen a foot of sea level rise in New York City since 1900. We've seen uh, continued higher incidence of rain events uh, in the last 40 years here in New York City, more incidents of storms. And certainly this is now the third, globally, the third year uh, of record heat across the globe in 2016. Uh, and so looking forward, and we're guided by the New York City panel on climate change on this, mm -hmm. we're looking in particular at sea level rise of one, to two feet by right. the 2050s and potentially as high as six feet beyond that. Yeah. It's all pointing to the fact that this can really impact our neighborhoods, our communities, our economy, and we need to be prepared and we need to be ready to withstand and adapt to these risks. Okay, so which let's, is talk, why we're let's talk about that. I want to ask another question. We literally only have about 45 more seconds, so I want to get through these two questions here. Superstorm Sandy, $19 billion of damage in New York, and we learned that buildings are subject to ongoing climate change. Let's talk about the codes and the changes that we're doing, retrofitting or new, new structures. Yeah, absolutely. We've upgraded the building codes because we've learned that building codes work and we need to continue to upgrade to it and make sure that our, our newest buildings are adapted. At the same time, we're retrofitting and rebuilding thousands of homes across the city after Hurricane Sandy so they're in much better shape uh, when, those, uh, when those risks continue to rise. Now, in 2070, it's predicted that more than 5,800 homes will be flooded with uh, two-foot sea level rise. What measures in the short term has the city taken? Yeah, so we've been upgrading our coastal defenses and we've been building dunes and upgrading bulkheads for neighborhood scale protection. We've been continuing to provide guidance on how to retrofit buildings um, at the building scale to make sure that they are better prepared for those risks. And driving uh, people to, our, to the, the guidance we have on a website called floodhelpny.org to help them navigate the financial risk of climate yeah. change to make sure that we can uh, have affordable uh, flood insurance to mitigate these risks. All right, Daniel, thank you for your information. Again, good to see you as well on the show, and thanks for coming back on with all that information.